Fast as Lightning by Ronnie Patel Illustrated by Mara Levin Betty Robinson was late again. She knew that the train would not wait. The train station was five blocks from her high school in Harvey, Illinois. She ran as fast as she could, and she made it to the train just in time. She did not know that someone had been watching her run. From inside the train that Betty was trying to catch, Charles Price watched Betty run at an amazing speed. Mr. Price was one of Betty's teachers. He was amazed to see his 16-year-old student running as fast as lightning. Mr. Price knew he was watching something special. He was the boys' track coach, and he was sure Betty was running faster than any of the boys on the team that year, 1928. Mr. Price wanted to know how fast Betty could run. He asked Betty to meet him after school the next day. He told her to wear her gym shoes and a gym uniform. He measured 50 yards on the hallway floor. He told Betty to run as fast as she could. Mr. Price timed her 50-yard sprint. When Mr. Price looked at the stopwatch, he could not believe his eyes. The time that Betty took to run the 50 yards was almost a world record time. Mr. Price invited Betty to train with the boys' track team. The school did not have a girls' track team. In 1928, many people thought that girls should not run hard. Many people thought it was unhealthy for girls. Mr. Price started to teach Betty some techniques runners use to help them run faster. Betty also started to run with the boys. These boys were the fastest runners in the school, but Betty was faster. When she ran her fastest, the boys were far behind her. Mr. Price knew that Betty needed to compete against the best women runners. When the school year ended, Mr. Price helped Betty join a women's running club in Chicago. To prove that she was good enough for this club, Betty had to race against the club's best runners. If she ran well, they would ask her to join their club. Betty Center with the Chicago Women's Running Club.
They ran a 100-meter race. Betty beat everyone except Helen Filkey. Helen was the fastest American woman in the 100-meter dash or race. Without hesitation, the women invited Betty to join their running club. After Betty joined the club, she heard the women talking about the 1928 Olympic Games in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Women would be allowed to run in the Olympics for the first time. Everyone trained hard. They hoped to be part of America's first women's Olympic track team. Helen Filkey. In June, the women in the club went to a running competition. Betty and Helen competed against each other for the second time. This time, Betty won. She tied the world record too. No one was more amazed than Betty. Two months earlier, she ran only to catch trains. Now, she might run in the Olympics. Three weeks later, Betty Robinson was selected to join the Olympic team. To win the Olympic gold medal, Betty would have to beat Helen Filkey again. She also would have to beat a Canadian woman. Named Fanny Rosenfeld. Betty, in the sprinter's crouch, preparing to sprint or run at top speed. In 1928, Betty Center won the gold medal in the 100-meter dash. Fanny Rosenfeld is the runner with a picture of a maple leaf on her shirt. People expected Rosenfeld to win the 100-meter dash. When the race started, Rosenfeld was ahead of Betty. Halfway through. Betty passed her and won the race. Betty won the Olympic gold medal by finishing 18 inches ahead. When she got home, Betty was a star. Her picture was in every newspaper. There was a big parade for her in Chicago, but Betty had to return to high school, away from the limelight. She kept running and training too. She planned to run even faster in the 1932 Olympics. Betty never went to the 1932 Olympics. In 1931, Betty was in an airplane crash. She survived, but one of her legs was badly hurt. The newspapers reported the sad news. Doctors said Betty Robinson would never race again, but Betty would not give up. She suffered great pain, but kept working hard. For more than two years, Betty could not run at all. She kept training, and thinking about the Olympics to be held in Berlin, Germany. In 
after her injury, Betty could not compete in the 100-meter dash. She could no longer kneel in the sprinter's crouch. She tried out for the women's Olympic track team, but Betty was not the world's fastest woman sprinter anymore. In fact, after her injury, one of her legs was shorter than the other. She could no longer kneel in the sprinter's crouch for the 100-meter dash, but Betty could still be part of the Olympic team. She could compete in a relay race. In a relay race, only the first runner started from a sprinter's crouch. In the 1936 Olympics, Betty was on the 400-meter relay team. Everyone thought the American team had no chance. The German team was the best in the world. Betty was the third runner on the American team. By the time she got the baton, the Germans were far ahead. Just the same, Betty ran as hard as she could. She watched as one of the German runners dropped the baton. The German team could not finish the race. The American team won the race. Betty had another Olympic gold medal. The women's 400-meter dash team, left to right, Harriet Bland, Annette Rogers, Betty Robinson, and Helen Stevens pose for a picture. Then Betty decided to stop racing. A few years later, she married. She had two children. Her Olympic glory became a memory. Betty Robinson had done something no one thought was possible. She overcame a terrible injury. In 1928, she was the fastest woman runner in the world. In 1936, she was one of the most courageous. She had shown the whole world that she was a champion.